Hi guys, I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. John Essek, how, I mean Josh Essek, how are you doing? How are you doing? Last week was a very tough week for me. I've been in ministry, if you can call what we ministry, um, for about eight years now. We started, I started quote and unquote preaching, no, to be honest, I've been in ministry for 13 years because I used to run a Christian program on the radio, which used to be the service for many people. Um, and that was, that started in about 2009. Uh, it was called Praise Jam. Then it became The Sanctuary. Um, that, that was from about 2009 to about uh, 2020. We stopped during COVID. But the Free Nation Ministry started in 2017. Uh, I got tired of the lies and Christendom. I got tired of um, the falsehood and the false narratives. And I felt that the time was right for us to branch out because the church um, structure was not allowing truth seekers to come forward and speak truth to power. We knew these truths, but we were not allowed to speak them. And this is what happened with the Protestant movement. When Martin Luther King then could not voice out the issues they had, they broke out of the Catholic Church and formed the Protestant Church. Charles Fox Parham, the spearheader of what we have today as Pentecostalism, was never ordained a pastor. He came out from the Methodist church. He was tired of the hierarchy. He was tired of the things that were going on. He wasn't happy with the fact that people were not being able to enjoy the fruits of the spirit. So he broke out of the Methodist church and with his friend and partner, William Seymour, they formed the Pentecostal movement. Remember, Christ himself broke out of Judaism and led his followers to form Christianity after his demise and resurrection. So Christianity was formed mostly by Paul in protest to what the interpreters of the laws of Judaism had turned the faith into. So when you get to a point, the only way we could preach the word of God, or you could preach the word of God 20 years ago, was either you had a lot of money, and you could pay a radio station or a TV station to preach your message, or you go under a spiritual father, and you dare not go under this our Jews as a spiritual father and come and preach a message that is contrary to their message. Their message becomes your message. And they will grow your churches. And you owe them tithes and offering. So the younger pastors pay their tithes to their Jews, the daddies in the Lord. They buy them gifts. And what the geos do in turn is give them the franchise. It's a McDonald's KFC formula, works every time. Today I said I wasn't gonna have anybody to read the Bible for me because I'm not gonna read too much Bible. Today I'm gonna talk a little bit. Please permit me to talk. 
Let me call my daughters. I was supposed to start an hour ago, so Amarachi was asking me when are we starting. I'm so sorry, I just needed to get, I needed to get my thoughts together. You don't know how hard it is. We're live, my darling. You don't know how hard it is to get you to articulate your thoughts. You can't write it down. I've written it down before. You see, when you're at a, when you're at a crossroads, it becomes even more difficult those of you who follow me during the week even though i said i was going to preach one sermon this week we ended up doing more church and motivation this week than our usual gossip sessions so many of you have been familiar with this uh, can i please interrupt i usually start with a prayer but i went into the message and I think it is now high time. You all right? You feeling good? Oh yeah, wipe your mouth. You drank milk and his whole mouth and body is covered. How do you eat all over your body like this? <laughs> if you chop like this, it will stain in legs, stain in the back of his head. I don't know, I don't understand that. Like the food is running somewhere. So let us start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather in your name. I thank you for the love and the kindness you have bestowed upon us. And I ask for the strength and endurance to continue till the end. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. So last week, there was this pastor guy who, by the way, among all of the new generation guys he's one person that although tries to bring what i believe to be a false type of spirituality because we know spirituality we've studied it brings a false type of spirituality into it he does tell some truth so i always looked at him with a lot of respect until it seemed like he came attacking the truth seekers calling us haters of the, the faith, you know, and brandishing all sorts of, uh, I'll say, they're not even on the level of conspiracy theories, they are utter falsehoods. With plenty of sound effects, shoo, 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 and echo, and reverb, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Um, you meet a lot of people, they have doctorate degrees, you can, have, you can be a doctor. But how much time did you put to study the scriptures, the history of the scriptures, scriptures in original languages? You see, much of what your scholars, by scholars I mean proper scholars, are teaching you today, we've been teaching in the free nation for years. People like Adar Nuk, there are things I've been teaching for three, four, five years that some top scholars are just releasing now. I'm not even talking about the semi-scholars and the subliterate pastors uh, that you have that try to make a case for um, what they don't understand. I'm talking about proper scholars, people who have PhD in theology, uh, people who went to the university to study religion. So this last week was particularly difficult. I saw what religion always does. Put a nice face, a nice suit, to a body of lies and I felt like giving up I felt that there was no hope if you follow me during the week I went through this not because your pastors speak things they have no understanding of we know them it is the way the congregation praises them because you see there are history that you have access to or there is history you have access to you might not understand the Greek scriptures that were written in coin Greek. You need a scholar to put you through. You might not understand the Aramaic scriptures, but history is available to us all. And when they start misrepresenting history, then we have a problem. 
But my problem is not them misrepresenting history. My problem is you <laughs> clapping for them when they misrepresent history. When I first watched that video, you know, I, am I going to call it depression? I was just down. I was like, so what have we been doing for the last seven years? What have we been doing? Are these people not getting it? Yes, you have started attacking your top geos, the old daddies in the Lord, the grandpas in the Lord. You have started coming for them. And I thought, good, I love your old geos, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem. I just want them to preach the truth and I want the church to be accountable and I want people to be able to stand up to the church and ask questions. If Paul could do it, if Paul could stand up to Peter in Galatians chapter 2, why can I not stand up to a Nigerian that is you and point out an error? Your old daddy Jews, they've started dragging them online. They will say one thing that does not really make sense like this. They will begin to drag them. It wasn't like that when we were growing up. People were afraid of these people. But, but you see, that's not the solution now because what it has done, it has created the opportunity for those who understand how to cut and paste with cut cut. I mean, cut cut. What do they call that? Cut, cut cuts on TikTok. We come on TikTok and pew, 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 pew. The new generation, the disposable generation. When I first released my video yesterday, somebody said, Daddy Freed, your video is 18 minutes. Who is going to watch it? I say, I will put it for those who want to watch it. I'm not going to do cap cuts. You cannot condense five years of research work into yes or no. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, Daddy, please, you're a follower of the devil, yes or no? I said, no. So why are you calling yourself Lucifer? Before I could answer, he said, you said Jesus is Lucifer. Yes or no? I said, you cannot put yes or no to three years of research work. Especially because you have 20 people here who have not done the research work, who have not done a contrary research work. They are just going to listen to yes or no and use their understanding to judge me. I say you're going to have to give me an hour. When I'm done with the hour, I will tell you whether it's yes or no. Cap cuts, good editing. Sound effects, music in the background does not substantiate a message. The truth does. And that's why in the Free Nation when I'm preaching, I don't have somebody playing keyboard. I don't need you to play keyboard for me. Pastor, it is part of the psychology. The Lord has said it. It could enter your head like saying that God they talk to you. Meanwhile, 99% of what the church teaches today is human error. Misrepresentation of facts. Renegotiating the scriptures. Making God look weak and bad. Geos. Calling fire to attack kidnappers. Really. You are calling the God of Israel to bring his fire to attack kidnappers while the Israelites are bringing out the Iron Dome. No, 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 I'm, I'm going somewhere today. I understand when the older guys make these mistakes. I've tried preaching to my mom. I've tried preaching to my mother-in-law. You can get a little bit of headway. But that you'll be able to preach to someone of my mother's age and win them is impossible. You cannot tell them that what they told them when they were Jensen's baby, baby, freeze age 
can be removed like this. That is why I don't allow my children to go to church. I don't want the foundation of their understanding to be dogma. Someone was arguing with me the other day. said, Daddy Freeze, why don't you go to church? My answer is, what am I going there to do? Are you going to teach me Bible that I know more than your geo-spiritual father? Explain, is it Bible? What is it? You want to give me motivation? I started from nothing. Forget the fact that my mother is a lawyer, a professor of law. Forget the fact that my father is a doctor. Do I look like I'm running a hospital or do I look like I'm running a chamber? I broke out of my family's chains and went into broadcasting like no other. All my, even my father's second wife's first son is doing his PhD as I'm talking to you. So a lot of people say, hey, that the you came from a privileged background. How? Did my father give me hospital to run? Or did my mother give me law chamber? I had to break out and create a career for myself. So I don't need your motivation. You cannot motivate me. I know what life was like when I was any 1,500 naira a month and I did not give up. In BCUS, the year I left, they increased my salary to 3,000 naira. MTN came out that same year with recharge card 1.5. So my monthly salary could only buy two recharge cards. I'll take it even further. 1.5. And government will still take its tax, tax. So you cannot even buy two whole recharge cards. And MTN had no... The smallest MTN denomination there was 1.5. So if I was using an MTN line, I could only buy one recharge card a month. Not full, recharge card. So am I going to wear my cloth and go to church to get motivation when my entire life I've motivated myself? When we started the free nation in Christ, I used to write articles then. There was no Instagram live video. I would write and Instagram would be full. And I'll start the next column and write again and three people will like it. And taste boards would go through it and say, no, you can't say this, you can't say this. I'll be angry and say, what do you mean I can't say this? When I've calmed down, I've seen her response. He said, no, 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 do it like this. I don't need motivation. Yesterday night, taste boards was shopping for clothes. I was in the car waiting for her. I started responding in the car. I came back, I just, luckily for me, I just played it for Taylor. I said, no, 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 no. And I called the vex because I was in the vex mode. Taylor said, no, 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 no. You cannot answer like this. So, first of all, your background is bad. The light is not good. No, 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 no. I faced the vex. Say, oh, this woman does not know what it. I came down, came to the house, sat down. He said, your response should not be fight. You are not quarreling with anybody. I sat down, I put my response together, and boom. Jigga, please, you need to watch my response video. You would understand. So why am I going to church to get motivated? Motivated by who? By what? What do you want to tell me that I've not been through? I've been dragged by people you people think are God, and I stood. They cursed me, they've prayed against me, they've blocked my work, there's nothing they can do that they have not done, and I'm standing. You tell me that I will go to a church to get motivated. I am motivation walking. No matter what they did, we are still balling, we are still driving latest cars, we are still living good. If you want to be motivated, read about me, follow me. And now telling me to go to somebody who is who is making his money by collecting 10% of people's salary. And being pushed by his geo who he's franchising. And that's motivation for me. Do I collect tithe? Do I sow seed? And the sad thing is. There's nothing. I stopped going to church. 
as in physical church, because this is our own church. I stopped going to physical church in 2015, 2016. It was a journey for me. And I pray you don't have to go. My father used to say something when we were kids. He said, a wise man learns from his mistakes. A wiser man learns from other people's mistakes. You don't have to make the mistakes I made or taste buds made. Learn from us. It's easier. It cuts the learning process. Don't reinvent the wheel. I'll tell you my story. When my divorce happened, my pastor, who used to be my friend then, came to my house and said, that I should come to church where I should stay at the bar so that you know there's no there's no problem in church. And if I'm in a new relationship, I cannot bring the person to church. I was absolved from all church duties. But my mind went to John chapter 4. The woman at the well who had had five, five husbands, I was living with the six. I can't think I say, now only one. I don't divorce. So this woman don't get five. She can't live with the person waiting to be her husband. And Christ still used that to preach the word of God. So if my pastor is telling me, say I divorce one, say I'm not going to come they do church work, I think he's misaligning the message, not understanding what the message. But I kept going to church. I kept paying my tithe. And I was paying, I started preaching against paying tithe. I was already going through hardship. My ex tried to destroy me. No brand wanted to work with me. Already going down. Nigeria entered a depression. We kept going down. And I kept paying my tithe. No matter what, I kept paying my tithe. Let me tell you how I stopped paying my tithe. I didn't have money. That's how I stopped paying. I didn't have money. I missed the first month. I didn't buy. The second month, I now said, God, please forgive me. You know, I never miss my tithe. This second month, I will pay. All my bills showed up. Tithe no day again. I no pay the second month. I no buy. By the third month, I just, I know, I know, can't get conscience for the first two months where I don't miss again. I just say, God, moving forward, I will pay you my tithe. That same month, <laughs> the bills grab me for every part of my body, give me upper court. Bah. I don't pay the third month. Bah. It just reached six months. I don't realize you, boy. I never paid tithe since. I know why. And so my deliverance happened. Poverty was my deliverance from tithe. Maybe freeze to say, poverty. That was that your word? Povertized. I was. Yeah, yeah, that is a perfume called povertized. That you spray it on yourself. Now poverty now stopped me from paying tight. I don't get the money to pay again. Before then, I used to pay twenty percent. My pastor was building down the road from my house, walking distance from my house. He was building a house of God, quote and unquote. Me, I did not build my own house because I believed I had to build a house for God first. So instead of buying land, I was paying tight and paying double, paying offering. I had building offering separate. I was paying 20% tight and then every month I was taxing myself for building offering. The first person that fought me in this world was my former pastor. Over the same tight. I started studying scripture. Things were not adding up. I met a Greek scholar who started showing me things. He had his PhD. His father was Greek. His mother was Nigerian. So we had common ground and he had PhD in Greek. Linguistics. Big shout out to Pastor Toby. If not for Pastor Toby, I'll not be here today. 
When you hear that, you say, hey, he has dashed you money. <laughs> People's brain is like sand. Last week when I wanted to give up, out of the blues, two people called me, Shukovon, first in the morning, and then pity. And I'll tell you what they told me. It was what they told me that made me get up and ginger myself. So the more I started reading scriptures in Greek, the more I started asking questions. God bless you, Toby Adegbuega. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're a good man. You who don't know this guy, he is cerebral to a fault. As in, forget, he loves nation building. So he doesn't look at church from the spirituality. He looks at church from how can we build this generation of thieves, this generation of uh, substance children, this generation that has nothing. How do we raise them up? No Nigerian president, my opinion, no Nigerian president can solve Nigeria's problem because Nigeria needs 20 years. You can only solve Nigeria's problem 20 years from now. But the problem is the things we are supposed to do now that will make us solve Nigeria's problem in 20 years, have we started doing them? Toby Adeboeja has. He has started gathering people. He has started opening minds. He has started sharing ideologies. He has started bringing young black people together. He has sons, not biological children, in Oxford University that he's paying school fees for. He has raised people from prison to top level jobs. Prison. People who were in prison and are now earning $30,000 a month. In economies where best paid are earning 3000 Let me continue with my message. The more I started reading in the original languages, the more I saw the errors. And I realized something. The more I ran to my pastor friends and other pastors with the errors, the more they will say, no, the Bible, the Bible is, is many people see revelation from different things. No, 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 no. The Bible was not written for revelation from different things. It was a targeted audience. The moment you are trying to say the Bible where each time somebody reads it, it ministers something different, you are renegotiating the scripture. My last two minutes was about Tobia de Boyega. It was not about pastors. It was not about you. It was specifically addressed to one person. Don't interpret it as Awolowo. Because many of the things I said Toby did, Awolowo also did. So you can now see that, oh, let me, no, no, that's the negotiation. I meant. The Old Testament was written specifically for the Jews. It was their law. It was the code of their conduct. They lived a life based on the Bible. The seven day, seven year structure. Do you know that in ancient Israel, the year they pay tithes, first year, you are supposed to eat your tithes. Deuteronomy chapter 14, 22 to 26. Go and read it. Second year, you are supposed to eat your tithe. Third year, you are supposed to take the whole tithe and distribute it between the Levites, the widows, the foreigners, and the orphans. Fourth year again, you eat your tithe. Fifth year again, you eat your tithe. Sixth year, you distribute between the Levites, the widows, the orphans, and the foreigners. And on the seventh year, what do you do? What do you do? You don't work. It was a seven... On the seventh year... The land lies fallow. Slaves are set free. 
Then once again, another cycle of seven years begins. So if you read any verse from Isaiah or Jeremiah or Deuteronomy, it wasn't talking to you. It wasn't meant for you and it wasn't talking to you. You can read it like we who have understanding of it, read it to understand what was before Christ came. I pity all of you that are going to Psalms and read Psalms like God was talking to you. Or you go and read Leviticus. I say God said God was not talking to you Leviticus 19 27 and 28 I'm, I'm not supposed to read Bible today because I really don't want to. today I want to teach you sense Leviticus 19 27 and 28 please let's read Leviticus 19 27 and 28 please let's read it verse 27 you do not trim of the hair on your temple this is your temple here do not trim it or trim your beards do not trim your beards verse 28 do not cut your bodies for the people with up eye and do not mark your skin with tattoos i am the lord two instructions none of them were referring to you God did not tell you not to do tattoo the same way God did not tell you not to trim your beard. Then you see your geos clean shaven. We tell you tattoo is a sin. How do you pick one part of a two part message? How do you? First of all, whether it is 27 or 28, not if nothing concern you. It was not talking to you. But the moment you pick it up and you say that, okay. This Bible is talking to me, then you must carry both. All your top Jews, they all clean their beards. Disobeying verse 27 and obeying verse 28. Then you will tell them that, but the same Bible, they say, eh, one does not say, eh, not everything that is suitable, or not everything that is desirable, shut up. Neither was that verse talking to you. In the free nation, we teach you how to study the scriptures so you understand the context in which it was written. It was not written for you. And you cannot apply it to your daily lives. Until you understand what he meant. Leviticus 19, 27 and 28. I took the extra time to start understanding what this meant. I have scholars beside me, like Simply Vic, Victor Iru, a brilliant scholar, brilliant. Every year on my birthday, Victor Iru, or popularly known as Simply Vic, will send me books. That's my gift, read more. Totally, you would just sneak. I mean, you don't read this book. What does it mean? Go and get it and go and read. Every day, whether I reply, Victor, can we, can we please put our hands together for Victor Yuru? Simply Vic, can we please? Even if he's not in church today, it doesn't have to be. Can we put our hands together for him? Every day, whether I respond to him or not, he sends me new material. Sometimes the material is overwhelming. Sometimes I can only reply with one word. I cannot even spell the thanks completely. I don't spell T N X. But never, ever, ever can I underestimate the scholarship of Victor Iru. Call him, send him DM, all of you, simply Vic. Wake him up for wherever he is. It is because of people like him. No matter we quarrel, simply with no the vex. If you quarrel with him, you know the vex. Because he knows we are going somewhere. And if we are quarreling, we are, we are wasting time. Last free nation service in the UK, simply because he said he was not coming. Ah, I don't vex 
but I know if you hire, I know if you show them now, why I go through? I just hold on for body, say so you are not coming, no problem. I come, they just talk. I don't know, say him and Remy don't come. So he was now, he was now downplaying me, trying to say, don't worry, I've done everything in absence, I don't need to be there. Baba, last night I saw simply Vic. I knew that he could not abandon us. Scholarship. Remy was there now. I said, we pranked. They pranked me. Oh, that was one. Anybody else I could have tolerated. Simply Vic. Ah, I've a wrong mad. Every day I get new material. Read this, check this, look at this. Every day, whether I respond or not, boom, 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 boom. That's what the free nation is built on. Scholarship, understanding. One of our preferred Bible scholars who has PhD in theology said the same thing I've been saying about Lucifer. Simply be, just said me one line. We are right. We've always said this. Another person I like to appreciate is Jigga Collins. When it comes to scholarship, when it comes to understanding Africa, when it comes to understanding the potential of the African man. Jigga Collins and I worked on the original Free Nation before that one was disbanded, but Jigga and I have always been brothers. He was in my house last year, had a wonderful meal. Another person I have to appreciate is Sheo Kuti. Sheo Kuti go sit down, hold on for hand like this. They tell you truth where your pastors not fit tell you. And they watch Sheo Kuti go blow that thing when they. He go blow out of the way to make it clear. I won't hear what this guy they talk. Because when it comes to history, when it comes to pan Africanism, you cannot joke with that. You cannot joke with that. If me and Shion Kuti went somewhere and the, the, the conversation was African history, you think I'll be talking and she will be sitting? If they tell me to talk, I will get up and I'll say, This person, let him talk. When he finishes talking, me, I can now talk. I cannot talk before him. Last week, I was depressed to my bones. I felt like everything I have done with just that video from that pastor came crumbling down. And it had nothing to do with the video of the pastor because they are all like that. It had everything to do with the coin, with the people tagging me. I refuse, come and see and come and learn. Ah! Come and learn. From somebody that if I wanted to teach Bible, I will teach him every day three hours, and in one year we've not he has not covered one percent of what we need to cover. I should come and learn. Of course, I can learn from anybody. But when it comes to scripture, I dedicated my life to studying this. They were tagging me, they were tagging me, they were tagging me, they were tagging me. As they tagged me, they tagged you. As they tagged me, they tagged you. I said, what is this? I now went into the comment section. Now, Jaya Mana has sit down for my house. So now people tag me, tag me. So I went there, okay, let's even see what they are tagging me that I should come and learn. I first listened to what Baba said. Ah, this is what I should come and learn. Can't you do your own verifications? Then I started reading the comment section. Oh, you are too great. I will never leave this page. Everything you say is true. Ah, what happened to the burying Christians? Acts chapter 17 was talking about. Those from Beria were more noble than those from Thessalonica because every day they checked the scriptures to see what Paul and Silas were saying, to see if it was there. What happened to the burying Christians? All we have is Thessalonican Nigerians. I looked at it. Thousands of comments. 
all praising the literary powers of somebody that was talking what does not make any sense with special effects. I'm like, what? And I felt like I cannot do this. A family member of mine came to me one day. Daddy Fees, how are you doing? I said, we're fine, we're good. Are you still running the church? I said, yeah, we're running it, we're trying. My brother said, don't you think you should close the church? You know, and focus on this, your broadcasting system is broad. And it entered my brain. That's why I always tell people, be careful the kind of people you put around you because their words are seeds of thought. And when they put them in your brain, they start to germinate. They don't need your consciousness to germinate. That's the problem with seeds of thought. They don't need your consciousness to germinate. They will germinate whether you are watching it or not because they've been planted. Do not allow them to plant. And each time I run into a roadblock running the church, each time I run into a, an issue, the first thing that rings in my brain is, bang, bang, close the church. It's not like you are making any money there. It's not like they are paying you any money. It's not like they are even having impact. Close the church. I brush it off. I shake it off. But when this guy released this video, that little seed that person had planted last year had now become a tree in my brain. And it ran through that it frees. You can't succeed with this. Focus on making money. Your children are growing up. They need money. You are not making money from this church. Focus on the gossip, the gist, the interviews that pay the bills. Leave this church. And I said, but this is my calling. Yeah, I will close the interviews. I'll close everything first and stand by the church. But that tree had grown and had started yielding fruit. And I said, you know what? I was deflated. The very next morning, the first person to call me was Shukbovon. I'll never forget this. They don't put a call through to me. First thing, as, in, as I picked the I was talking to my dad. We were trying to sort of, uh, solve some family issues. I was talking to my dad. I, was, I just saw Shukbovon's call coming in as I was rounding off with my dad. I was like, oh, I think Shukbovon talked this much. I just picked the call. Normally, my phone not, I won't have picked the call because unless the phone is in my hand, I don't pick calls. I can't deal. So I just leave the phone somewhere. But if I'm typing and the call is coming in and I see the person, I can quickly pick, yeah, 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 what's going on? I just pick Shupa's call. Shupa said, Daddy, please don't stop, oh! I don't tell Shupa anything. I've not even spoken to Shupa in, in a month plus. It's not somebody that I call regularly. Don't, don't, don't let them, don't let them get to you. Ah, uh, I don't go, the guy pays. I don't go tell them my, in my mind. The guy don't block me. That if he's, don't let them get to you. Forget the work you are doing. We too, we are doing it on the streets. I look at myself. Huh? I've been a god. The you should but talk to me. I said, no problem. So my downcast mood was semi-lifted. I now saw, that's why I pinned this. Come, uh, I saw Toby Adegorega's call coming in. That's Pastor Toby. It was Ubi's birthday, Ubi Franklin. So I said, yeah, pity, now Ubi, bad deal. You know, go put out for your page. We're just cracking jokes about Ubi. And then he said, I, I listened to your message yesterday, and you were talking about sacrifice. What do you define sacrifice to be? Ah, now so I start, eh, Bible scholar, Moshe. 
Ah, sacrifice is what Christ did. Blah, 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 blah. He laid his life down. He did this. He did that. So, uh, Peter now said, okay, how does that apply to today's world? Oh, our pastors need to be sacrificial. They need to, uh, instead of using the church to eat, they need to lay their lives down for the church. Blah, 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 blah. So when he finished, you know, Peter, you know, you know, Sabi shout. If you want to talk, you go just... You don't talk like saying they laugh. It's not smart. You don't throw it in. He just said, you know what real sacrifice is? He said, you know what Christ did on the cross? I said, yeah, 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 that's real sacrifice. <laughs> Listen well. Real sacrifice is never giving up. Standing on what you believe. They brought the whips. He didn't give up. They brought the crown of thorns. He didn't give up. They stripped him completely naked. I'm sure many of you don't know that Christ was completely naked while walking to the cross or the stake or whatever it was used to crucify him. Oh, you thought he was wearing loin clothes. Let me tell you, the best way to understand what happened to Christ is what happens to thieves in Nigeria when they catch thief. The way that they put on tire. The only thing is those days they did not have tire. The way they go flog them naked, that's exactly what they did to Christ. If you've never witnessed it before, go and look for a video. He wasn't wearing a loincloth. If that one way would look like a tight towel. Nah. He was completely naked. Bula the shoe. Bula home. Everything. And he didn't give up. Just before he gave up his ghost, he still gave a thief beside him the message. And Tobi Adeboega said to me that day, he said, that is sacrifice. He said, Daddy Freeze, the only thing you can do now that will be considered sin by God is not if you carry woman on. Or not if you thief, forget all those ones. Say this message where God give you to go give them. If you stop now, it is sin. Now they don't know think of. Now I realize that God sent Moses on the message. Moses, as if you don't understand. Moses they fumble God now they they cover your f up. When Miriam and Aaron went to meet. God, they said, Ah, come, why are you speaking through this Moses? He don't go marry another wife. He can't even marry black woman. What about us? I say, How dare you talk to my servant? He just quickly dashed Miriam leprosy straight, say, Cake. Because you see, when you are on a path to somewhere, God knows, say, be human being, and you go get error. The wife of the person where David killed, Naim, Naim born the next king. Oh, God will deal with your issues, but your real sin is stopping in the middle of the message. I woke up that day energized. Energized. I said, God, it's not an opportunity for me to sin, and I'm not going to sin. But I now know what real sin is. And I said something to Toby Adeboega that day. I used Davido as an example. I said Davido's vote is one vote. Davido's campaign is one million people. Make it make sense to you. Davido does not have to get up to go and vote. All he needs to do is one month of campaign for a candidate. He will secure more votes than you that are going there to vote. The moment we start looking at Davido and judging him by his votes, we are going to miss the essence. We don't need celebrities to vote. We need them to stand by candidates. On the voting day, they should be at home playing PlayStation. It's okay. 
when you have 2 million followers, 10 million followers, 20 million followers, and every day for one month, you just release little clips of one particular candidate. You have done all the voting 1 million people can do. And I thought about it, that some of us placed in positions of change. Musola, Abibukola, I see you, my sister. Chichi, I see you. Those have, that have been put in places of change, the greatest sin is quitting before the change is birthed because God will replace you. If you quit, you are going to be replaced. You are going to be replaced like this in a heartbeat. So when I decided to respond yesterday, I knew it was coming from a place of power. How can you say Christianity brought education to Africa? How? Who brought Christianity to Nigeria? The British people. They did not exist. When Acts chapter 8 was written, speaking of the treasurer. Imagine a black man being a treasurer to the queen of Ethiopia. He was reading aloud. As he was riding in his chariot, he was reading aloud. British people were the savages back then. They did not even exist. The whole land was yay. And then they would tell us that Mary Slesson, now he stopped the buying of twins. And pastor will wear clothes, can't defend her. So if not for Mary Slesson, stopped the buying of twins in Nigeria. They tell you say Calabana, Nigeria. I am Yoruba, I said it and I'll say it again. In Yoruba land, twins are already sharp. There are some women that once they give birth to twins, they're not going to walk again, they're going to use the twins to beg. Ask anybody in Yoruba land. If the twins tell their mama, say, no walk, or more, the mama no go walk, they go to carry them the beg, and people they dash them on it because they're mama of twins. Ask anybody in Yoruba land. In Igala land, when you want to serve twins, you never serve them with one hand, you serve them like this. And one person would tell you, say, we in Bo. That's the same way they told you that it was Mongo Park that discovered the Niger. I gave you that. Mongo Park was Shibu. People were batting in the Niger, fishing in the Niger, washing their clothes in the Niger, fetching water from the Niger. Then one of the man comes and says, Oh wow, I have just discovered the Niger. And those ones swimming inside say, Oh my God! This is a great discovery. I didn't even know it was in Niger. Wow. The same thing they will say Marco Polo discovered China. Chinese people use and do sleep. Go and watch, go and read about Marco Polo. He read China. The Khan. Kacham use and do slave. Then he went back and said he discovered China. How? Christopher Columbus discovered America. Like there were nobody living in America then. Christopher Columbus just came, saw people everywhere. And said, oh, we have discovered this place. That's the problem I have with Jesus. A lot of people, when I first I said, I'm not going to call Christ Jesus. Because when I call him Jesus, what I see is Marco Polo, what I see is Christopher Columbus, what I see is Mongo Park, what I see is Mary Slessor. No. They rewrote the history to suit them. They made us look uneducated.
They wrote the history for themselves. How can you discover us? You came from a country that did not exist when we had queens ruling over us. And then you discovered us. You gave us a narrative that suited your agenda. That is why Jesus looks like them. He doesn't look like us. You will never hear me pray in the name of Jesus. What is Jesus? Jesus, Marco Polo, Mongo Park, Christopher Columbus, they are all the same. They are the whitewash of our reality. There was a savior. His name was Yahushua Hamashiach. Same name with Joshua. There was a savior in Aramaic. They called him Yeshua or Yeshu. Anything after that from Jesus in Greek, they don't begin the adultery term. They don't begin a right term to suit their agenda. First Bible we had, first compilation, first canon, or what seemed to be a canon, was translated by Jerome in 405, instructed by the emperor of Rome, written in Latin. For 1,200 years, we had a Latinized, Romanized gospel. In the Council of Nicaea, it was decided whether Christ was a man or he was God. So you want to tell me that Jerome just went there and wrote the book in favor of Africans? Of course not. He went there and did the king's bidding. And I'll tell you for free that Jerome did a far better job than King James. Because King James himself was a scholar. Jerome was the most brilliant young scholar during his time. But you see, King James himself was a scholar. He was a scholar of Greek. He was a scholar of Latin. He was a scholar of English. So King James oversaw the proper rendering of scripture to suit his narrative to suit his reality i have about one more minute left on instagram so i'm going to restart the video please i'm not going off on any of the platforms youtube i'm still here facebook i'm still here uh we have about 300 people watching on YouTube and about 270 on Facebook, about 133 on TikTok and 14 on my personal YouTube handle. So I'm going to restart Instagram. So guys, just bear with me. So we're going with the part two now. Please bear with me, guys.
Welcome back. One of the problems with religion, where science is way more potent and powerful than religion, is religion relies too powerfully on eyewitness accounts. Religion relies on eyewitness accounts. An eyewitness account is the worst. Can you guys hear? Eyewitness account is the worst form of evidence, the cheapest, the poorest form of evidence. Imagine malaria medicine was brought as medicine because somebody saw it walking on somebody. No. Religion relies too heavily on eyewitness account. So all you need to do is make people dumb. That's the formula. You will sit down and believe somebody's finger regenerated when Mr. Ibu is there waiting for a whole leg. Somebody comes and shines their teeth and look pretty and tell you because you are trained by religion. That's why I don't allow my kids to go to places of religion. I keep them away from it. You sit down and you take eyewitness account as powerful. You take eyewitness account as science. All their testimonies are eyewitness accounts. Me, I've said I will quit. This. What will really make me quit this free nation is any pastor that can raise me bad, I will become a church member. The one that I know we don't buy. You are healing finger. So your God, as powerful as he is, now finger ain't he healed. When there are people who have lost limbs, there are people who have SS, and then you are coming to give testimony. But you see, my problem is you. I say, share that thing to my kids. They laughed because I trained them to have sense. I raised them to have sense. I raised them to realize that eyewitness account is the lowest form of evidence. Imagine somebody now who has no... Let me give you an example. Me and Jiga are aware of this. There was a day I have some understanding of aviation. There is a video of, my, of me on my page flying a plane. Jiga Collins is a trainer. Not only a pilot, he teaches people how to become pilots. He's here. There was a day a helicopter took off from Portacot and landed one minute before the airport in Lagos. Landed on top of people's houses, everybody died. Then one of your top actresses with 10 million followers, because somebody else has said, ah, the, I know the person is my cousin. This pilot was so good, he dumped his fuel just before he hit the building so that nobody will buy. I said, don't I look kind of like this? He don't feel. Ah, ah. Helicopter feet jettison. Do you know even your 737, your normal airpiece cannot dump fuel? Your normal Dana air cannot dump fuel. It's called jettison the fuel. They cannot do it. It can't be helicopter. Now I call everybody where I know we be helicopter pilots. As of then, one of my friends was one of the highest placed helicopter pilots in the whole country. Now I call him. I say, Papa, helicopter don't begin a jettison fuel. He said, Now so himself read that move. See that guy way by. Say now him being your guy. And that guy flying has always been questioning. Him. 
I sat down. I read the preliminary, pre, pre, preliminary flight report. They said, from what I understood, he ran out of fuel. So instead of him being a hero that saved the people, he was actually the one that fired those people on his plane. But you believe the eyewitness reports of your celebrity. I came up, I did a video from my understanding of aviation. I, Jiga and I sat down that day and did a video together. Nobody answered us because we don't have the clout of the celebrity actress that said the guy was a hero. That is how dangerous eyewitness accounts are. They seem powerful. I've seen it with my two eyes. Were your two eyes trained? I remember there was a time in UI when a tree fell down. And then the tree stood up again the next day. Now everybody begin to talk, say, ah, oh my God, ah, now Juju, that tree, now which they live inside the tree, blah, 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 blah. We had a professor of horticulture. I forgot, his father, he's one of his sons, is a very popular guy. I've forgotten the guy or his son. The guy came there, professor of horticulture. They are trained to study plants. He gave the phenomenon of what makes trees rise again after they fall in? Let me let me look for it. A falling tree standing back up might seem like a miracle, but it has a fairly simple explanation. As stumps uproot one side of the root plate of the part of the tree, keeping the tree firmly in the ground, the pressure on the other side counterbalances itself, resulting in a fulcrum effect. Professor of horticulture came there that they saw the tree that had fallen and the tree had stood back up. Nobody answered him. Nobody answered him. Me, that loves knowledge, I ran to him. I said, sir, please explain this well. You see, if a tree falls like this, it bends the root that way. There's tension on the root. There's water holding the tree. The moment the water starts to dry off or falls off the leaves, the trees become lighter and gives the root bent that way the opportunity to snap back. It has nothing to do with juju. It has nothing to do but every single person there was telling me shut up shut they were telling a professor of horticology to shut up they were telling a professor someone that studied trees and plants to the point where he wrote thesis before he became a professor he first of all got his phd you because the person that reported it to you believes in witchcraft automatically it's a sign of witchcraft that's how religion works eyewitness account of those whose eyes have not been trained let me ask you a question do you think if elon musk mark zuckerberg and bill gates and an Okada rider, where they go, Pentecostal church. Do you think if they witness the, the same phenomenon, do you think their account will be the same? Just think about it. If that tree fell and stood back up, and the people there were Bill Gates, Elon Musk, 
Mark Zuckerberg and an Okada rider who has no form of education, do you think their accounts will be the same? Answer me. Their accounts will all be very, very different. Because eyewitness accounts are the least reliable accounts. That is why aeroplane has formula. If you're taking off, if your speed is this, your weight is this, the wind interference is this, when you hit this speed, you have reached your What do we call it in the view? Mm -hmm. hmm? V1, I beg your pardon. And after your V1, you've reached your speed of rotation. VR. So I was here a pilot said VR. They watch the next, they watch the speed as it gets to VR, the next one automatically announces rotate. And once you rotate the aeroplane, the plane starts to climb, the next thing you see positive rate of climb, meaning the plane has started to climb. You remove the gear. They do it like that every day. 100,000 flights take off and land. Every day like that. It is science, not eyewitness. Religion does not do that. What religion relies on is the eyewitness of an account of people who did not... As if I can never forget that day in UI. People were arguing with a professor of horticulture. Someone that spent his whole life studying tree. He wrote his dissertation on tree. How do you know it was a witchcraft a phenomenon because your grandmother told you so? There's some things I want to share with you today before I close. According to Sigmund Freud, religion can be seen as an infantile and philogenic prototype because of the danger, cruelty, and why from nature and faith. And out of the feeling of helplessness and weakness, weakness like a child, the human race in childhood established the idea of a divine person as father. This is called religion. And it's just another part of civilization. It gives people a way out from a sense of helplessness, fear, and anxiety. Religious doctrine solves the riddles of the universe and reconciles us to the suffering of life. Let me explain what Sigmund Freud meant by this. Rain starts to fall and thunder strikes. You don't understand weather. You don't understand physics. You are helpless. You start to pray to God. The way a child in trouble runs, mommy, mommy, mommy. Have you ever seen a child in trouble before? What did they shout? Mommy, 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 I want my mommy. Let me give you an example you can all relate with. The plane is flying, hits a bit of turbulence. And then prayer meeting starts. Oro shiri bi bi bi, hara ba 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 ba, oro gi bi 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 bi, hiri chi chi. Meanwhile, the pilots are drinking coffee. If you are a pilot and you understood turbulence and you understood that what was happening was normal because you flew. There was one day I just I was sitting beside these boats. Do you know what it is? Jiga, are you still here? Do you know what they call it? Towering cumulus. I saw it ahead. There was no way. You know, the plane came from a bank and everywhere was cloudy. 
So as the guy turned, I, I'm sure that was the best heading, but from where I was seeing, I said, ah, this, this guy will enter this towering cumul also. Tazebox was sleeping. I just woke up. I said, Auntie, wear your seatbelt. We're about to enter a towering cumulus. Tazebox said, oh, What is it? She now showed me her seatbelt. So me, I fastened my seatbelt. I sat down properly. Um, by the time the dancing began, Hey, oh God. Hey, Father Lord. Oh, oh God. Hey, oh God. Because you don't understand how to control nature. You don't understand how to control fate. You don't understand how to control your reality. You run to divinity. Have you noticed that once you go to Canada or Europe, where people have mastered how to control the universe, prayer points reduce. Have you noticed? The difference between Nigerians and Canadians or Nigerians and Germans is because we are still relying on God to control our environment. In Germany, you do well in school, you get a certain grade, you do what you're supposed to, you will get a job. Nigeria, do everything you like. If you don't have Godfather, you will not go anywhere. And a lot of people will come forward with the argument saying that if he is, are you telling us not to pray? No, I'm not. I'm telling you to pray with sense. You don't have to pray one hour every day. Sometimes all you need to do is be quiet and listen. God is speaking. You talk too much. You talk way too much. Not only are you talking to God, you are commanding God. Sometimes as you're just driving, just spend five minutes, just look for something to thank God for. Thank God for my mind that has been opened. Thank God for access to the information. Thank God. You see, you see, you see. Imagine I have two kids. I have a 10 year old. Like baby freeze. I have a baby that is six months old. And I have a 22 year old like Yella. And we're all having a picnic. Oh, we're playing with the baby. We're eating. Then all of a sudden, there's a, a volcano erupting. Who am I going to carry? Am I going to carry 22 year old Yella? I don't know. The baby is going to be scary. I'm going to carry the baby in one hand. Because it can't walk. Hold baby freeze in the other hand and start to run. Yella go run, follow me. Babies are the ones they carry. Look at somebody beside you and tell them run. The Americans run. The, the Chinese run. The Nigerians are still waiting for God to carry them. Volcano is coming. Daddy, daddy. Help you, help you. The Japanese build buildings. They live in Volk, uh, uh, what is it? What's that thing called? Okay. Earthquake. They live in earthquake prone areas. They build bridges that can withstand 7.0 richer scale magnitude earthquakes. Just pray in Nigeria that earthquake doesn't come. That your third Milan bridge. You turn it to sand. Let alone your house. Your house will go on ant hill. While the Chinese see the problem coming and start to run like 22 year old Yella. The Rwandans are still better than us because God they hold their hand. So God only leads them. They run. We are the baby. If God not carry us, the volcano will cover us. 
I hope I'm analyzing this Sigmund Freud theory to you. Maybe I should read a bit of it again. Religion can be seen as an infantile and phylogenic prototype. Danger, cruelty, by from nature and fate. In America, they have thunderstorms. There was one day I was walking with taste buds in the UK. That last, that, this time last year, no, this time 2022. When I came with taste buds, we're not there. No, later. You no, know, went to the UK twice or three times in 2022. No, it was twice. 2023 went three times. We went. That first one. Yeah. That first one. The second one. Then the third one went for Pity's birthday and you were with us. So went three times 2022. So the first time, that was when one, one storm was blowing. I was pushing my luggage like if you see all my hair, my hair scattered like this. The wind, they blew me. If they blew my luggage, they blew this ball. The two of us, they did like this. Planes did they fly, they land. Because they've gotten up. They've understood the weather. They've understood what fate, games fate can play. They've understood the reality of the situation. And they either deal with it or prevent it. Look at the amount of hurricanes that hit the US. Tornadoes every year. Hurricane. Bushfires. They don't sit there and say, Mommy, Mommy, carry me, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. No. They get up and they run. They know how to run. They know where to run to. But in Nigeria, ordinary houses burn you. See them speaking in tongues. Harakata be shere be 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 robo bo 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 Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. You are calling fire to act to fire. Because you're a baby, infantile, waiting for God to come and rescue you from what in a developed nation they will just dial three numbers on a phone. And fire truck will come, helicopter will come, everything you need will come. Very infantile, very phylogenic. You watch, there's one guy I follow, adventuring or something like that on Instagram. You go see the guy, the waka, the go do your adventure. You don't see snake, fat the guy go begin to push the snake. The snake go don't say, I say, ah, we're in here, now they come. He, the snake go begin to run. The guy go chase the snake. The snake go enter water, the guy go run, enter the water with the snake. Guy, the snake come out. Come show us the type of snake he be. He has mastered his environment. He understands the snakes. He knows where you pick the snake from. The snake will not be able to bite him. But you, Snake now winch. Once you see snake like this, even if a harmless grass snake, if the snake they come like this, you go run like that. <laughs> yeah. Mommy, mommy, mommy. But this time instead of calling mommy, you will call him God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Get up and run. Get up and run, Nigeria. We I mean, both people's gods. Cannot save you. Let me read something else to you. <sighs> Around 500 BCE, a Greek philosopher called Xenophagus noticed that the gods of the Ethiopians were black with flat noses, whereas the gods of the Tauritians were blonde and blue eyes. And he suggested that oxen, lion, and horses, if they could make gods, would make them like oxen, lion, and horses. Not that he found no use for the notion of a deity, but his own god resembled mortals, he said. Neither in shape nor in thought, he mocked the all too human gods around him for the sake of a better, purer concept of God. And so did the Hebrews through a philosopher like Xenophanes. Let's talk about this.
you have no idea of what God looks like. So you draw something. You can draw something, but you can't draw God. So you draw the Son of God. So the Son of God gives you an idea of God. And the Son of God looks like you. So God must look like you since you are built in God's image. So you have white Jesus and then his white father with beer beer, all white, looking like Santa Claus with clouds. If you think that is bad enough, welcome to Africa, where our gods don't even resemble us. Xenophon has said, if lions, horses, and cows were to create images of their gods, the lion god would look like lion. The cow god would look like cow. And the horse god we look like horse. The same way the Buddhist God looks like Chinese, Asians. Just the same way the Hindu gods look like Indians. The Greek gods look like Greeks and the Roman gods look like Romans. Because we cannot understand the God concept, we try to humanize it. We try to have a God created that we were created in his image and we only end up creating a God in our own image. The Greeks create gods that look like them. The Romans create gods that look like them. The Chinese create gods that look like them. The Indians, the Japanese, all create gods that look like them. And if you ask me, that's a big flaw. And if you ask me again, the bigger flaw is we have a God that doesn't even look like us. He looks like our colonial masters. Why do you think I never use the name Jesus? Because when you Google Jesus, the picture that comes up, bad enough. Why do you think even the Bible said you must never make idols from wood and stone? Why do you think you can never see a Muslim video with the face of Prophet Muhammad Because in order for them not to be in error, they leave it blank. If they show a movie of him, you will see that they only show the back of his head. They will never show his face. Our error is so grave that we don't even have a God that resembles us. We have a God that resembles our earthly masters. And you are telling me that he frees, that I should not save you from that God? You're a black man. The sun is at its hottest. You walk out there with your melanin. The other day I was, I, was, I was walking with two friends of mine and they were asking why I didn't use sunscreen as the sun was peppering my whole body as we were walking. We saw one guy wear a short nicker. He did carry cement. He did, he did do this. I looked at the guy and said, he don't need no sunscreen because he's a pure black man. The sunscreen they inside in DNA from birds. You can't bring a white god that needs sunscreen on the Nigerian heat. So come and tell us how we we'll solve our problems. We need a god that understands the essence, doesn't look like us, but understands the essence of who we are as a people. A god that can be found inside of you and I. We don't need to bring him out and create him and build a big temple and go there to worship him. Acts chapter 7 verse 48 and Acts chapter 17 verse 24 tell us God does not live in buildings built by human hands. My message today for Nigeria is if you are dumb enough to pay first fruit to your pastor, you are dumb enough to sit down on the floor and cry mommy, mommy 
Oh, Jesus, Jesus, when you should get up like your mates and run. Those who are running don't have time for religion. As they are running, they are worshipping God in the run. Some without even opening their mouths or without even thinking by solving the problems of the people. Sometimes there is no money. A Chinese man who does not believe in any God comes to dash your country money. He has done God's work. He has saved you from hunger because that day your prayer point is how you will eat the next day. While we're crying, Jesus, 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 the Chinese are running with God. I'll give you the illustration again. Me. I have a two-month-old baby or a one-year-old baby. I have nine-year-old baby freeze. And I have 22-year-old yellow. And we're having a picnic. And the baby is licking lollipop. Baby freeze is eating everything because he eats everything. Yella is eating chicken. Me, I'm eating steak. And the next thing we just hear the rumbling of a volcano. I'm the father. Even though my daughter is 21 years old or 22 years old, she looks up to me for answers. But my 22 year old daughter would be a fool. If she expected me to carry her and run and leave the one-year-old baby. She watches me do like I do. As I start to run, she starts to run, probably running even faster than me. That is how God works. You're a baby, shouting, God save me from this volcano. I've never seen it before. I don't know what is going to happen. Help me. And me that you are calling God is running with those who trust me to see and believe that I know where I'm going and they run with me. As Yela is getting up to run, she sees a two-month-old baby the mother went to the toilet. She's picking up a baby. That's the Chinese man for you. Other babies, African countries, that cannot get up and run with God. The Germans are picking them up and running with them. If I am your God, I pick you up and run with you. Whoever does the same becomes your God too. That is why when you pray to God for a car, a Japanese man answers your prayer. When you pray to God for a phone, an American answers your prayer. When you pray to God for education, a Canadian person answers your prayer. When you pray to God for healing, an Indian doctor answers your prayer. When you're bored and you say, God, please, I need somewhere to go and rest. A Dubai man answers your prayer. Look at somebody beside you this morning and tell them the message is run like God and run with God. We are too old to be crying, Mommy, Mommy, Jesus, Jesus. We need to get up. The direction in which God is going, we would go that direction. Wake up. Every day you cry of poverty. You know why? Because you have refused to run. I think I should end my message here. You're enjoying it? Ah, this is the first time you please enjoy the message. Nigeria's solution lies in understanding that you can solve many of your own problems. Trust the scientist because you can question him. 
when you go to a doctor unless you go to state hospital where the doctors know you are not paying them well so they talk to you anyhow i remember sitting down one day with a plastic surgeon amarachi are you here with me my darling and we were asking we, we wanted to see a plastic surgeon for my daughter and the doctor sat down and was explaining bit by bit this is a plastic surgeon 17 years of work what he was going to do to my daughter he was explaining it and we're asking questions and he was answering and we asked him more questions and he was asking go and ask the pastor question the reason why you should trust science more is because the scientists will answer your questions How is it that in the UK the roads are good and in Nigeria the roads are bad? How is it that Dubai is safe while Nigeria is not? How is it that if you go to Canada you will earn a comfortable living meanwhile you left from Nigeria where you could barely feed? Ask those questions while you're shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Canadians are walking with God. They might not know him, but they feed off his energy. And the energy of God is not found in a church. The energy of God is found in a human being who's getting, who gets up to solve a problem. The energy of Moses was solving the Israelites problem of bondage. The energy of God is in everyone doing a service to humanity. The right brothers had the energy of God because if not for them you will not be able to come to Nigeria on a six-hour flight from the UK. Well, we are looking at the replay, you can say, hey, Balu. Not because our ancestors were bad, but because the white people forced our ancestors into premature intellectual menopause. We stopped evolving. Our educational sector stopped evolving. In 1960, the Chinese were going through the Great Chinese War, a Great Chinese Famine. They were poor. But they had their minds right. They fixed it. They didn't wait for God. They fixed it. We 70 years later, I'm still waiting for God to come out and fix Nigeria. We are still calling on the fire of the Holy Spirit to catch kidnappers. We are still subsidizing pilgrimage to Mecca and Jerusalem. We are babies sitting on the crown on the floor, shouting, Mommy, 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 when our mates are doing the work of God. This year, if this message hits you well, Get up, rearrange your thoughts, rearrange your mind, your ideology, and start to run with God. God bless you this morning. If you love the message, you could please share it. Thank you all for coming. Run like God and run with God. Simple. Everything else will fall into place. When you are running with somebody, imagine as you are running, God is telling you, avoid that place, avoid that place. Ah, okay, 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 thank you, thank you. Pick that baby up. You are picking that baby up. You are running, you are helping. You start to converse with God without knowing you are talking to God. While the Nigerians are somewhere, Father, if I be a man of God, you're a man of God and you are sitting there calling Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When pagans are running with God, when atheists are running with God, 
When Shintoists and Buddhists are running with God, you call yourself a man of God, sitting down, shouting and declaring. One that the geo came out and in 2016 and said the Naira will rise against the dollar. You think it is by declaration. Those countries that fix their economy, you think it's by sitting on a pulpit and, and talking inside microphone. Is that how economies were fixed? Get up. Run with God and run like God. God bless you. Thank you all so much. See you during the week. And once again, I appreciate you all. God bless.